All right, welcome back, Pokemon Go players, to another episode of the PRFI Podcast. Today is March 27, 2022. I am your host, Luis Palacios, with my co-host, Chris. Hey, it's your boy, Pokemon Trigger, please. How you doing? How you doing? I'm doing great, considering that you've been playing Valorant until the last second. Yes, sir. Wonderful. And longer. Hey, there you go. All right, well, uh, it's been... How you been, brother? <laughs> this week has been crazy. It's been a yeah, great... It's been a, it's been a wild week. Wild? I will say, uh, Pokemon Go has been... a. Uh, pretty fun this uh week too yeah and uh, you know aside from gameplay there's definitely a lot to uh to cover when it comes to what's going on in the community right now it's 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 just it's great it's great um because you know we're we're front and center on a lot of different things not not as specifically but oh boy <laughs> Uh, but yes, the gameplay uh, has been actually pretty fun. Uh, we still got a couple of days of the of the uh, jungle lush event that we mentioned last podcast, of course. Um, so definitely, we're here once again to talk about Pokemon Go news and updates, and probably controversies about the big game, just as much as you do. <laughs> we love the game just as much as you do. I messed everything up because I want to say something. Anyways, uh, don't forget that everybody that we are part of the Professor Network. Please check us out, professornetwork.com slash purified podcast. If you are wonderful and you want to listen, we will love it. I love that he's actually ready with the podcast every single time. Kind of wish I actually had the YouTube site ready for that, but we'll see. <laughs> um, with that being said, of course, uh, let's recap up a few things before we get into this. Okay. Uh, deep waters hole. But anyways, <laughs> um, yeah. So recapping this week, what you got? PvP, Hundos, Shinies, anything? Well, um, it wasn't too exciting until today. Ooh. Uh, to my knowledge, let me just double check. Dun dun dun. Because <laughs> I think one of them was when I said no. Um, so it started with a shiny uh, Chin Chow, mm. um, which you know I I really wanted to get a, another shiny of that because uh, I literally just got it for the first time um, during oh shoot what event was that Johto tour okay um, like just then um, so I just finished the family nice. uh, getting the second Chin Chow so I'm super super happy about that and then today. Driving through GT Bray. Mm. I, uh, clicking on a few things, you know. Mm. And what do I get? Shiny Cottony. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, bro, you could have told me that you'd be in a GT Bray today. I, oh. I, I was there very minutely. Um, I was under the assumption that, uh, my girlfriend was going to get out of work a little bit earlier. Ah. So I, I thought I'd be able to drive from gt bray over to her house but okay she barely <laughs> so i had to catch pokemon <laughs> it's like but, but you went out and play because you wanted to actually experience the uh, part of the event that you know they said that, that was going to happen this weekend basically right it's like the only place that cotton is responding like crazy right you know? yeah I, it, it does make sense though um i hope they do more events like it it's not bad. I mean, concentrating it in places that we know people can actually walk and go to different places is actually great. Uh, it's it's what we want to see how Pokemon Go really works and how it moves things around and everything. So I actually went there after work on Saturday, so I know that uh, the response and everything was uh, incredible. Now, there were a lot of different things that I'll mention in just a moment, but... Overall, uh, the whole thing about it, it was great. I mean, I didn't see that many players out there just because not a lot of people still were, you know, wanting to go out in there. Nobody actually, like, came up to me say, hey, you know, you're playing Pokemon Go, did you get this or something like that? No, nothing like that. But uh, it was, I mean, it was amazing out this weekend for, at least for us, for Florida specifically. Uh, it was actually super nice out. It was in the low 70s or high or, like, mid 70s there, and it... it like, we were actually wanted to play outside, you know, experience the sun and the wind and everything. So, it wasn't too bad, the experience itself. Um, let me recap, actually, what I got before I get more into the actual event. So, all right, all right. as for shinies, I actually didn't get any new shinies. Hold on. Where you came from? <laughs> Where'd you come from? When did I get this shiny Paris? <laughs> How the heck did... Wait, what? Where, what? Did you go plus it? 
Uh, wait, no, it says the 22. What was I doing on the 22? I was Tuesday this week. What? Where you come from? I didn't even see you. <laughs> he made a surprise oh appearance. My God. I said that I wasn't going to get any shinies, but I got a shiny Paris. Like, where did you come from? I didn't even check on you. How long has it been since I actually damn check on a shiny this week? Oh, my God. I, I like... <laughs> I like to imagine you were just catching normally, and you're like, oh, that Paris looks normal. I, I mean, I was at work, <laughs> so I'm pretty sure that that either happened after work or just sometime during the work, but I was gold plusing. But yeah, that that was just a gold plus catch right there, brother. It's like, I don't understand. How in the hell did you come up? <laughs> and that's the thing. I mean, I, I, I would have never known if I actually didn't check my shinies anyways, but I mean, that's that gets the beauty of Pokemon Go at that point. And yeah. again, it's been almost a week since I even caught that, and I didn't even realize that that was there until I clicked on the shiny part. That's <laughs> crazy. <laughs> hey, I'm not complaining. I've been actually been looking. I've been clicking on every Paris for that reason, but it's it's actually pretty good. I mean, I'm I'm okay with that. Uh, I did also get a Honda this week. Ooh. Uh, I actually got the Didi Tapu Lele as a Honda. <laughs> I did a couple of raids, uh, courtesy of uh, Poké Genie out there, and. After the seventh raid, I got the hundo. I was like, I'm done. It's over. I don't need any more of this. I don't need another psychic type, of course, because, I mean, well, I got Mewtwo anyway, so it's not like I need any more powerful psychic types out there. It does... Yeah. Well, I can't power up anymore, so I can't show how much it powers up. I think it powers up close to the 3,000s or something, but I'm not entirely sure at that point. Anyways, uh, with that being said, of course, you know, that's where my shinies and hundos. PvP-wise, I didn't really get that much, I believe. Let me just make sure I check my favorites. Aside from those, I still can't believe all that. I did do a couple of lucky trades and things like that. So I got like a 98, 96 of Pokemons I wanted. Not too shabby at that point. Anyways, that's a big surprise. I don't know how the hell that even happened, but it happened, I guess. <laughs> um, a pleasant hey, surprise. That's the beauty of Pokemon Go, you know, especially when you play it in ways that you don't even know how you're playing it. So uh, crazy to say. I got super lucky at that point. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and recap how the Lush Jungle event has gone. Uh, we still have a couple of days until this event before we actually move on to whatever is next, which is, of course, the ability to uh, what we're going to be talking about in, actually in the news section. Um, but yeah, the Lush Jungle event, a lot of grass types, a lot of opportunities for shinies, just like uh, you saw here. Um, mm. And then Chris got in the Cotney, which is the brand new shiny release of this event. So... I, we want to say that, you know, so far we've actually been pretty happy with the, with our, our hauls in this and everything that this, this event has actually had to offer. The rates could be a little bit better, but again, those are just a minority when it comes to the actual event itself. Um, yeah, I, I don't think this is a raid event for sure. Yeah, no, this is just a go out and play and everything. Now, just like Chris has mentioned, this weekend was the, you know, the weekend at the park event for this kind of thing. Now, Cadney was spawning more frequently in parks. What defines a park is basically the green area in your Poke uh, Pokemon Go app. Uh, it's mostly just fully graded where either Pokemons can spawn or nests can, you know, Pokemons can nest in there and things like that. So we I know... Don't specify a dark green. Right. Dark green uh, areas of the Pokemon Go app, of course. Yeah, you, you're right. You're right. Dark green is actually a more significant when it comes down to it. Um, but yeah, so the event itself has, uh, you know, it was doing pretty good. Uh, I only played Saturday. I wanted to go today, but I was like, ah, you know, I got other things to do. Plus, you know, I kind of did other things and I kind of woke up late anyways. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, so in overall, the spawns were actually really good. Uh, I I saw plenty of Cadney. I think it, it, it could be a little bit better, but I'm not talking, you know, community day Cadney spawns oh. or something like that at that point. The only yeah. thing that I'm going to say that a lot of people actually... Or I guess Pokemon Go didn't actually mention is that the incest actually didn't attract any of the cutneys into when you were in a park. So, Aww. so you never. I, I was running an incest throughout the entire time I was there, at least one out of the hour and a half that I was playing, and I didn't like. I didn't get any spawns for Cutney at that in my incest at that point. Do you know about lures too, or? Um, unfortunately, they don't have that many. And I wasn't okay. going to be spending on them. I do believe if you use the Moshi lure and the regular lure in the park, I think the spawns were increase a little bit. But there weren't enough people to really test that out, unfortunately. I did try to call some of the community members in our, in our area, but unfortunately just, you know, didn't pan out just because of how people were going around. 
Yeah, um, while I was there only for a little while, uh, there was somebody that placed two lures, but I don't remember a cottony spawning off of it uh, just from the time I was there. Right, right. Uh, I mean, Lyantic like, was specified that it was basically a park, walk in the park kind of thing in the, in the, in the sense of things. Uh, all the points redemptions are actually not available for the for the podcast here, so sorry about that. <laughs> uh, we'll listen to them later. Right, but yeah, so it's it's interesting. It's, it was interesting, uh, but it was nice to buy one of clusters out there. I didn't get anything like super super cool, and I was tired from work, so I only played for a good forty minutes to an hour, and then I went home because again there wasn't nobody there and nobody that really was interested in playing. But that's how we are in the community right now, which we'll get into pretty soon into the podcast here today. But either way, not a bad event, not a bad initiate from Niantic when it came down to it. So uh, overall, what is your take of this event so far? Um, all in all, I think it's been a pretty fun event. Um, I don't obviously I don't think it's, you know, the perfect event for everybody. Uh, especially, especially the uh, hard raiders, because mm-hmm. um, you know the legendary wasn't shiny. Yeah, it's not super relevant for PvP in my opinion. Um, so I I don't really know uh, who would use Tapu Lele, other than you know the people that just are a big fan of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's just my opinion though. Yeah, um, uh, definitely. Yeah, other than that, I don't know. It, it really depends in the, in the sense. Yeah, so what was your rate again? Did you actually rate it? Or? Uh, only like one or two. I I was not worried about getting a lot of this guy. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, what's your rate for the event? I would probably rate it an 8 or an 8.5. Um, all, overall, very, very fun. Uh, yeah. I think the spawns are amazing. Uh, there's even a few other spawns that I'm not really sure were part of the jungle event that we're spawning right now, like Hitman Top and uh, Lickitung. Those are part of the season of Alola, and those okay. are just a mix of uh, event spawns that we have from okay. yeah from the event. Like program. those interlope together. Yeah, that was fabulous. Which the ratio between regular spawns and then the event spawns are it's actually pretty good because you still see like an immensely amount of different uh, different um, types. You know of spawns out there, so him on Tom, him on Lee, him on Chan, all those things. Uh, even I've seen Laratars and Dinos around. It's it's been crazy, especially since we've been a lot windy in in, in this regard. Also, uh, it's Mazer. Thank you so much for joining us today. Appreciate it for you to comment on the podcast. Uh, but yeah, so in the end of the day, it's not bad. I want to say that I give it an eight out of ten. So just because I mean, they could have been a little bit better, but again, we're not. You know, basing it on the shinies or the race, we're basing it on how the event itself went. I like the initiative from Niantic to actually say, hey, go out and play. You actually get, you know, more spawns this way. Maybe you meet new people. The only reason why it's actually relevant, just because of the shiny being more prevalent in the parks. You can still find Cotney in the wild from the event itself in other places, but it was barely spawning. It was like a rare spawn from the event itself, so... Not too bad, and I could have stood Niantic when it comes down to it. Of course, there's a lot more to talk about, but <laughs> um, in the end of the day, that's that's how I see it. And I think that's a pretty good take at the end of the day. Yeah, um, just the only thing I would probably change is the fact that it was only spawning on the weekend at parks, right? It was still spawning. It's still definitely spawning around the world right now or around the actual event. Yeah, it, it spawned a day, but today's Sunday. Yes, no, the event is still uh, a few... Uh, there's two more days oh, until sorry. the event. Sorry, I meant boosted spawns. Oh, okay. We were only on the weekends, you it, know what I mean? It, um, it was only on parks. It wasn't that it boosted yeah. anywhere else. Yeah, yeah, only boosted on the weekends. So, yes. say, for example, you work the weekends like me, and you're not able to go to the park uh, during the yeah. times that it's boosted. You're going to be disappointed. Um, but surprisingly, so no, you know, it is disappointing they didn't do it for more days. I say that the weekend was actually okay. Again, we're talking about how the the rarity of the spawns were happening in parks, and it started at ten a.m. in the morning on Saturday, and just ended as of the recording of this podcast. So, it, yeah, I I will say they did probably think of the bulk of the people when they did it. Right, like that, so. right, and you know. And we had had some time since the announcement of the event to actually plan it out. So it's 
really depends on how people were able to go out for those two days specifically. It's not, and again, they're not depriving the players out of these funds. It was just more rarer uh, and or more common in parks than in other places in, around the area. So it was interesting. Now for us, uh, the last few days of the event before the actual weekend, we had windy weather, and unfortunately, we didn't really have the chance to take advantage of Connie being spawning in there. You can still see them, but unfortunately, it was way more rare than than the, the the usual time that we have, like sunny weathers and things like that. So we gotta we gotta be careful when it came down to it. In the end of the day, so um, but yeah, no, perfect, perfectly good executed event. In the end of the day, trying to catch a lantern because you know I can. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah. Uh, anyways, we're running down too much on, on this event again. Kudos again for everything that happened. Now let's get into the research topics of this week because those are the most interesting parts of the of today's uh, podcast. In the end of the day, and get in the ball, Lantern. <laughs> um, Chris, can you go ahead and start us off? Yeah. Okay. April Community Day, Tapu Bulu and raids and Sustainability Week. Interesting. So the April Community Day will either have you very excited, very mad, hmm. or you're just going to enjoy it because it's a community day. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> so, let's... <laughs> uh, yeah, it's going to be uh, April 23rd, and it's going to be Stuffle, the flailing Pokemon. And this is going to be its first time uh, being in Pokemon Go. So it is pretty exciting that it's already getting a community day for its debut. Yes, definitely. Now we'll go over the details of community day because, again, there's a lot to talk about there. Uh, Stuffle, the brand new Pokemon that's going to actually appear in the game with its community move and its shiny release at the same time. So that's actually very exciting to be able to see a Pokemon more frequently and its shiny release at that point. It's like amazing for a lot of the players out here. Do you do you do have to remember the stuff well, does take four hundred candies to evolve, so we're gonna have to grind that weekend or that specific day for that reason. Um, but yeah, that's very amazing. Everything there. Now there are some coming events. Now like, this blog post is all over the place. Usually the events are like at the end, but this time they actually like put it all the way at the end for some reason. So uh, we do have a couple of events for the month of sp uh, month of spring. <laughs> Month of spring. It's more April. <laughs> uh, we have the April Fools 2022. Interesting. Interesting. Now we don't have full ability of this uh, or the full details of this event actually, and we're only like a week away from it. Uh, so I'm pretty sure this is uh, gonna happen literally at the time they finish this podcast or something like that. Uh, we heard some odd whisperings that a mysterious event will be happening on Friday, April 1st. We also have All Hands Rocket Retreat, an additional source reports that po uh, potential for heightened Tinko rocket activity from Sunday, April 3rd, um, <laughs> uh, to <laughs> Thursday, April 7th. Uh, stay alert. So the Halloween, or I'm sorry, the April Fool's thing is actually going to only going to happen for three days at best. It's going to be a weekend event, so that's interesting to say the least. Uh, then, of course, we have this rocket. I'm pretty sure this is the same as, you know, more frequently spawned rockets, uh, TM frustration away kind of deal. Uh, I'm excited to hopefully see if there's more to the story, but we'll see, you know, we'll see. Um, spring into spring. Uh, this is like a recruiting event from last year. So from April 12th to Monday, April 18th, get ready to jump into head first into spring with this team event. And then, Susan, uh, can you say the word, please? Sustainability. Thank you. <laughs> From Wednesday, April 20th to Monday, April 25th, uh, trainers will be able to reflect on the importance of sustainability while another Pokemon origin this card in the Alola region make its Pokemon Go debut. So uh, those are all the, the events. So basically we have the full news for the events that was going to happen. We just don't know what they're going to be. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, uh, Adam from the Laura podcast actually mentioned something interesting when I was uh, listening to them. And they say that the O... In the April Fool's event, doesn't that remind you of something? Yup, that's that's exactly <laughs> what I was thinking. <laughs> so you think maybe uh, Ditto, maybe somewhat spinning around? I'm curious if it's either a gonna be the only thing spawning around, but like we see it as other Pokemon, mm -hmm. like uh, maybe it's a bunch of Meltan again. Or oh my god! <laughs> or we crazy. finally see Cal Kecleon, but it's a Ditto instead. Oh my god! So something crazy like that. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's it's gotta be some with Ditto, right? It has to be with Ditto. Uh, a lot of people are saying this Kecleon. 
I don't know at this point, but again, this is just a speculation when it comes down to it. Because, uh, <laughs> uh, of course, Shawnee Hunt and Ditto all day. <laughs> uh -huh, yeah. uh, Three-day weekend for this? Oof, I'm ready for it. Anyways, um, but yeah, so a lot of a lot of things that are going to happen that month, and I'm happy that no matter what we do, there's still something going on throughout the month. So, All right, so we got rates. What we got for rates, Chris? Well, 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 well. Okay, until April 5th, we're still going to have Tapu Lele, the thing nobody wants. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're going to go uh, from Tuesday, April 5th to April 12th. Uh, we're going to get Therian Form Thunderous, uh, which is finally going to get that shiny release. Ooh, ooh. And then uh, Tuesday, April 12th to Tuesday, April 26th, we're going to get Tapu Bulu, uh, which I really like his typing. Uh, fire, fire, fighting grass right or, no, no fairy fairy he's fairy grass, fairy grass yeah. i'm tripping <laughs> oh my gosh I, I i'm going through every single typing in the book yeah uh, we got tuesday april 26th to tuesday may 3rd uh we're gonna get therian form landris i think this is one a lot of people are gonna be excited for for master league yes um yes and he's gonna finally have the shiny release I'm definitely going to be writing a lot of this uh, when it comes out, so or when it comes back, actually, because one, the shiny, two, it's a powerful Pokemon, and yes. three, I want the XL candy for Master League, for sure, so I hope that, that I can do as much as I want to. My wallet is, it's it's saving up, it's saving up. I haven't actually spent as much. You're ready. But I'm ready. Uh, as for Thunderous, uh, Tapu, Le uh, Tapu, I'm sorry, Tapu Lulu, or Tapu Bulu, uh, <laughs> um... Definitely an interesting one with the typing. Uh, we're just going to have to see. Uh, it really it's only a one and done right now when it came down to it. So uh, when it comes down to it. Uh, 9 for one Pali, thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate it. We are talking Pokemon Go news. Ooh, thank you so much for the follows. Uh, but yeah, so thank, uh, again, thank you so much, guys, for, for that. I'm sure you want to talk about all this when it came down to it. Uh, then we have... Mega Raids. So Mega Charizard is here until Tuesday, April 5th. We have Mega Manetric starting April 5th to Tuesday, April 12th. Uh, Mega Pidgeot will be happening from April 12th to Friday, April 29th. And then the 29th to the 3rd of May, we have a surprise Mega Pokemon coming to uh, Mega Raids. Now, ooh, there's a lot that we have to still talk about because there is an APK mine that we have to talk about specifically. Okay, I was just going to ask that. <laughs> yeah, and um, there's definitely more two Megas that we are about to see, hopefully. Um, but let's we'll get to that. Let's get to the news, and then we'll talk, definitely talk about all this. Uh, our raid hours, of course, we have Tenium Form, uh, Therium Form, Thunderous, uh, April 6th, April 13th, and April 20th, we have Tapu Hulu, and then Therium Form, Landorus, will be April 27th. I'm definitely thinking that I'm going to try to get the community going for some raid hours uh, for either Shani, maybe the first one for Tapu Bulu, and then, of course, Landorus, because that is really one to go for, no matter what. Our Pokemon con uh, bundle, our one Pokecoin bundle still available in the shop. And Chris, what is our precious breakthrough box of my pro? Oh. Oh, yo, okay. Uh, so starting April 1st at 1 p.m. PDT to Sunday... May first, one PM PDT. Uh, I, you know, do do the do the little switch over. Uh, but uh, it's gonna be a Lolan Marowak, which Ooh. has the shiny chance. Um, it's a very good Pokemon for PVP. <laughs> uh, it's got a really nice typing. So yes. uh, yeah, highly recommend uh, doing all your weekly researches for it. So, I mean, this Pokemon being in race, we have seen just outside of events, uh, only, you know, having it throughout those events and things like that. Also, thank you so much, FL Dolphins, also for joining us today. Um, but yeah, Marowak, a lot of Marowak specifically, has been a prone a Pokemon, in, even in the Grey League and all those things. So, if you are able to get it, get it, because you need it. You definitely need this, something like this for a lot of different things. Uh, what about our Spotlight Hours there, Chris? Ooh, okay. April 5th? We're going to have Stunky with two times candy for transferring. April 12th, we're going to have Bunnelby, two times XP for evolving Pokemon. Uh, we're going to have April 19th with Oddish, two times Catch Stardust. Okay. And then uh, April 26th, we're going to have Sunshine Form Cherum, two times Catch XP. I'm getting some 
flashbacks from Arceus right there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, very excited about the middle two um, between Bunnelby and Oddish, especially yeah. that catch Stardust on Oddish. You know, it's so sad that April 19 wasn't April 20 on a Tuesday. 420. Uh, <laughs> do you think they do you think they did it one day off just to be cheeky? It's it's April 19 is a Tuesday, not the actual like oh my goodness. Uh, <laughs> so it, 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 it didn't happen. I, okay, bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was it was sad that unfortunately that didn't happen. It was one day off. If if the year would actually align, it would have been the greatest event in the world right there. <laughs> but uh, either way, yes, uh, both of them are actually uh, pretty cool. I do need probably one or two more Oddishes to complete the family. The Stardust is pretty good. Bubbly, I did get two of them already, so technically I don't need any more of them. I do have a perfect PvP for it. Uh, Max XL and everything too, so it's there. Shiny, uh, or uh, Sunshine Form Cherum. Interesting one to actually see outside of just the, wi the weather itself. Like, mm -hmm. it's usually just controlled by weather. Why do you think that it yeah. just they spec specify sun, uh, sunshine form for that reason? Yeah, so you're saying it's possible that we're going to get some zero attack or, you know, zero IV cherums. Yes, yeah, and that's... It's, it's an interesting when, you know, when you see it. It's... It, why at that point, of course, you know, the catch rate is horrendous. Um, but <laughs> it's interesting to say that they're not controlling it through the weather. Instead of just giving us the regular form. Ooh, you know the first thing that comes to mind after that? What? A lot of people complain they can't get the snowy cast form. So maybe okay. that's a right. possible one in the future. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's a possibility. Thank, and thank you so much. Man, we're just getting people today. Thank you so much for everybody for watching and, and following. Uh, the news are here, you know, things like that. <laughs> Uh, a new Adventure Sync widget will be available on Android devices in early April, which actually I already have. It's the one that you can actually see your eggs, and it's right there if you can see it. If you click on it, it will take you straight to your egg pool, and then you can see what eggs you have. You will finally be able to have that, Chris. It's actually a pretty cool uh, app uh, widget, at least for your phone. So To do, to do what? So you, the widget itself, it's basically something that you can use to watch your eggs and how much it takes them to hatch. So yeah, you can put that in your phone or like on your home screen, like a widget, and then you'll just be able to see that. Yo. Yeah. Instead of having to open the app all the time. So it's like Adventure Sync++ plus plus kind of thing. Is that? Do you think that's only Apple or do you think they'll... Well, it says right here that it will be available at Android starting in April. Okay. Okay. Oh, duh. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah. So it says I'm right here, really when you enable Adventure Sync, you will now have the option to add a widget to your device home screen so you can track your progress when hatching eggs. So pretty cool just because of the reason that now that I, I'll know exactly instead of having to click three different places to see the eggs and things like that. Yeah. Or I was have, say that saves me a lot of power. Also the notification that you said, oh, I, it's about to hatch kind of thing, you know. It says right here, it's already available on iVoice devices and things like that. So... Uh, a lot of changes still happening for sure, and this event, uh, April seems to be a pretty packed event. Uh, it seems interesting to say, and I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of hopeful for, for April. Yeah, uh, this last event um, felt pretty loaded, so I'm very happy with yeah. what's going on right yeah. now. Now, let's talk about, before we get into the elephant of the room, because there's definitely about to talk about it, let's talk about actual Community Day, which we know the date of, we know the Pokemon. Uh, what are the bonuses? So, first and foremost, again, Shiny available in the wild, 400 candies. The move exclusive for Beware, when you evolve it, will be Drain Punch. Now, Drain Punch is a charge attack that will be actually give you a, defend, uh, a defense buff when you use it in go battle and trainer battle. So it's 20 power and guaranteed increase of user defense and then gyms and raids 50 power. So not a great thing for raids, but it's, it seems pretty interesting for uh, PvP. Do you have any ideas uh, on that, Chris? Yeah, I was going to say, it, it's definitely purely PvP, it, it seems like. Yeah. So. Um, there's a few Pokemon I know that can learn this, uh, that this is going to be very interesting for. Because uh, I think a lot of people are going to have to choose whether they want plus attack or plus defense. Because um, 
the first Pokemon that comes to mind that's very playable is Medicham. So, are they going to swap out Power Up Punch for Drain Punch? It really depends on, uh, you know, what they're going for, I think. Yeah, no, definitely. So, uh, it's going to change a little bit of how we see the, the move itself. So, I'm glad that, you know, it's making a change to the meta if you think about it so uh oh, yeah. we'll see how it goes uh just having extra defense is actually pretty great and you know that's actually something that i was mentioning in our last podcast you know how i was saying that some move can have the equivalent of the, the the same ability as the main series games so let's say um if you have thunder punch but then you have uh a, a like a chance of paralysis, you mean? Right. Instead of paralysis and status of X, we actually have the ability to lower the defense of the Pokemon. So it takes actually uh, it's it's easier for the Pokemon to uh, to to defeat the Pokemon in front of you, uh, or has the chance of it. Like the ten percent chance from paralysis, it actually makes it slower. So it's more prevalent to more attacks and fa- and faster attacks at that point in the main series games. But in Pokemon Go, it can mean just the defense drops and or the percentage of the defense drops, and then you can you know punch away at that point, you know, you can punch away in the Pokemon at that point in, in that regard, so something similar can be through this, now Drain Punch in the main series games heals you, so instead of the heal, it's giving us the chance of uh, the increase, that guarantee increase to the user's defense, so it's harder to kill the Pokemon at that point. Now, of course, there's a lot of different things that comes about it, like if you have a low health or something, but it kind of makes sense if you think about it, right? Um, it definitely makes sense the way they decided to do it. I was very interested whether or not they were going to have health, um, like health receiving moves, like for example, Mega Drain and stuff like that. I was very curious, uh, if they were ever going to put those in and allow the Pokemon to regain the health that was getting taken away. Right. Um, I think that would, you know, cause a lot of problems. In Pokemon Go, I, I think that would make it, you know, a lot trickier for them to code uh, GBL, in my opinion. Um, I think you know, they just because it's like a turn to turn basis instead right. of it being one turn at a time. Yeah. yeah, and that's the reason why I think that just reworking the types of move that we already see in main series games to fit the Pokemon Go PvP meta yes. seems a lot more prominent at that point. So again. If the move has a status effect, it can actually be something in Pokemon Go. It just has to work a way around it. If it's lower, then that means it's hard. It's easier to kill. If it's the, something like that, you know. You, the it, statuses you know. are the only thing I'm a little bit iffy on. Um, I don't. I, okay. I just don't want every single move to have a status change. Yes, but again, it just it it, it just really it, you need to think about it in Pokemon Go sense, not main series sense. You know that we're both we're not we're both we both know what the the game is about for twenty plus years at this point. It's just yeah. oh lord, when it comes to Pokemon Go, it's just it's making its own meta, just like TCG has its own meta. It doesn't have the same effects. It just has you know similar ones, and in, in the sense, and then. Other games have the same thing. Like even Arceus made made uh, changes to how the moves work, and it's you know it helped. It's helpful in that in that sense. So I think Pokemon Go can it's taking advantage of that in that in that regard, just making it its own meta in that sense. All right. Uh, again, uh, Drain Punch, powerful, in- interesting move, and again you need four hundred Stuffle candies to above Stuffle. Uh, where are the bonuses? Well, actually, first and foremost, we have this, uh, the research, the special research story. Uh, strong stuff. Yeah, not your best one there, Niantic. <laughs> uh, it's the $1 bundle kind of deal, so make sure you go to the story if you want to buy it, things like that. It's the same as any other community today at that point. And then bonuses. So, we have three times catch experience. We have two times catch uh, or chance of receiving stuff all Extra large candy from catching Stuffle. We have lore modules. Active for the event will last for three hours. One special tray, extra special tray made during the event. And two hours after the event, we have two times catch candy. Incense activated during the event will last for three hours. The snapshots, of course, and then trays made during the event. And two hours after the event will require 50 less Stardust. Now, for this type of event, that's a stack bonuses for sure. Any exciting ones from there, Chris? 
Uh, I I want to go with the extra large. Yeah. I, I'm I'm always excited to see them boosting extra large candy. So a times two chance of it. Uh, with the weather boost, that thing's got to be freaking freaking high. It's got to be. Yes. No. Definitely. Uh. Definitely. In in that regard. So it it's uh it, it's crazy to say about it now. There's a reason for uh, all these special event bonuses. Uh, there's also, and then we'll get those in just a moment when we can, when we finish up here. Group play bonuses. So work together with other trainers to unlock additional bonuses in that location. If enough Pokemon can are caught by trainers from a single lore, the three times bonuses for catching Pokemon near the lore Pokestop will increase from four times for thirty minutes. Oh God! Now this bonus will not stack with the base three times catch bonuses. Will instead replace it for the duration. Now you see where we're going here, right? Interesting. Yeah. Well, it's insufficient it, it, where it's encouraging group play, which I'm all for it. Especially for a brand new Pokemon, it seems very, very interesting in that regard. Uh, event bundles. There's a special one, uh, Pokecoin bundle purchase for 850 co Pokecoins this time for 15 Ultra Balls, 15 Pineapple Berries, 1 Elite Fast DM, and 1 Remote Rate Pass. And then mm. in the bundle for 30 Ultra Bowls will be on the shop at no cost. And of course, some stickers. If you go around and spin some stuff, stickers are there for sure. Cute stuff with stickers. Right? <laughs> uh, this Pokemon is like super popular in the community for a lot of people. So there's definitely going to be people using them for sure. Yeah. Now, all of this is great. All of this is amazing. All the events seems amazing. There is one thing that we've been avoiding, and this is what we're going to be talking about now. So, Community Day Adjustments. We also wanted to take a moment to discuss some changes to the Community Day format we'll be testing. Note, we'll be testing. In 2020, we doubled the length of our Community Day events, extending them from 3 hours to 6. Since then, however, we found that only 5% of the trainers tend to participate in the event more than 3 hours. Note, the biggest pieces of the positive feedback that we received after January's three-hour Community Day Classic was that players and community leaders noticed that how much more the community was out and about during the event. So for Staffel Community Day, we're returning to three-hour format. Our hope is that doing so will create an even more opportunity for trainers to play together and connect outside as they're exploring. We know that trainers have enjoyed all extra uh, resources that can be collected during longer hours, uh, longer events, so we're adding some new and exciting perks and stuff to community today to give you the ability to collect just as much resources during gameplay. Check them out, of course, that's what we mentioned already. Now, there's a few key pointers what we're going to be discussing about this. First and foremost, the change from 6 hours to 3 hours. The second thing is the, um, the extra bonuses that they're giving us because of that change, and the encouragement that they're actually giving out through group play, and of course, what are their data, like the 5% players when it comes down to it. Now let's break it down. First and foremost, six hours to three hours. Are you happy about this, Chris? Personally, um, I don't see that much of a change with it. Um, th like, just for me. Um, you know, it, it's, it's just me, you know, not having to grind for six hours. You know, right. Uh, so it's half the time. Um, with the same shiny chances, I just would expect to get half as many shinies as with six. You know, something right. we were used to before. Right. Um, which I think it was about thirty, if I really tried. Um, if you're really out and crying for every single yeah, minute of the hour. Yeah, yeah. If I was like really grinding. Yes. Um, but. I don't know. I I think you can almost be guaranteed to get a shiny as long as you're out the full duration. Even for one hour, even getting one or two is just enough for a lot of people. Now, yes. you know, there's always a complaint that says that this type of community that is always devalues the shiny. And I can understand that because, you know, shinies should be harder to find, should be harder to obtain, and technically and overall should be rarer in that regard. Community days makes it a little bit easier for us to be able to get that shiny and get uh, all the candy necessaries for that Pokemon. Yeah, get walking. Definitely. Now, when it came to six hours, I wasn't really against it. I, well, I mean, nobody really was against six hours at this point. Uh, however, I did see that after some time, 
the ability to actually play all those six hours kind of diminish. And except for moments like either Cable Community Day, which I know everybody was out and about, uh, and some prevalent PvP Pokemons out there. Now, not everybody is out for those, for those kind of things. Uh, majority of the hardcore players, which usually is only the 1% of the community, really only play for those six hours for the reason of grinding. Um, I'll get into something after we finish here because there is actually a, an article from Pokemon Go Hub or Poke Hub that mentions all of this uh, with one of the Niantic community leaders um, out there. So, either way, uh, six to three. I really like the three hour for the reason that it seems less FOMO y. You know, it, it, like when six hour came to me, everybody was getting shinies 20, 30, 40. Some people were getting over 100 Shinies in one community day, and it was getting crazy at that point. People are also saying, it's like, we need more storage for all of this. I'm like, well, I mean, you're the one who grinded for all of this, so I don't know about that. But in the end of the day, it's... I don't feel like it's actually, like, okay to play all six hours. Now, it is called Community Day for a reason, but we call it Community Day since the very beginning of Community Day, so it's not that much difference in that regard. So, being that it's changing, it really depends on how you want to adjust to it. Now, when they announced months in advance of when the community was going to be for the month of, for the season of Alola, actually, so for the month of uh, April, month of May, and the month of March, we already knew what days were they. So we already knew ahead in advance for a long time when do we have to take those days off, or if you're working. You know, when do we get prepared for those kind of things? They didn't tell us about the hours of the Pokemon, but that's the reason. this is the reason why. So to adjust to it and only play for three hours, especially now that we have more daylight, seems pretty good if you know what you're doing. Now, um, the second part of this is the data that uh, the Pokemon Go or Niantic has actually accumulated, the 5% of the players. Now, this is the elephant of the room. This is what we're, everybody's talking about in, in this regard. The 5% of the players seem to, or at least the community thinks that the 5% of the players is only the hardcore players and not the ones that benefit from the six hours. I don't think that's true, especially with you know other things. Now, again, we're not talking about all players. or I'm sorry, we're not talking about a specific players. We're talking about all the players out there and how they play the game. So I think, Chris, you actually perfectly mentioned at this point, you cannot please everybody. It's impossible to please the entire yeah. community. It's yeah, impossible. It really it's impossible. The community, especially the Pokemon Go community, is all over the place. And I'm saying that it's fully toxic because I met incredibly amazing people because of this game. But it's out there, and unfortunately, we have to deal with that, no matter what. So, that's one thing about it. Now, the other thing, uh, thing is that this is just a test. They're trying to test out what the issue is with Community Days. I feel like that this is a good test to start off with a brand new Pokemon, a brand new Shiny, to see if the players actually go out and play. And because it's a brand new Pokemon and a brand new Shiny, I'm sure people will all go out and play. And the bonuses just make things over the top, which a lot of people are not seeing. They're only seeing the problem. You know? So, again, it's not a problem. It's just a test that they're trying to do to see. Now, they tested out with the Community Day Classic, which we all thought it was going to be a more recurring thing from here on out, but it means that less for more, things like that. It's not about that. It's about the community. We always knew that Community Days is to... Go out and play, go out and hang out with people. You always meet different types of trainers, and everybody usually is out during those three hours. Now, Chris and I, who are close to day one players, we know those kind of things. We've seen it, we experience it. We always want to go out to the community days because we always see those type of people. But the pandemic changed all of that. We know. Now, this comes with also the controversy of the instance changes that they did from the 30-second stationary gameplay to um, the more 30-second to movement play, uh, gameplay. And 
unfortunately, it's like basically adding fuel to the fire for what has already been a extensive problem with the community right now, or at least the complaints that the community has been having since the announcement of those of those changes in the end of the day. Um, but either way, uh, I know I'm ranting on for a little bit, but it, there's a lot of different things about it. I don't know. I, I just think that this is a good change for the reason that I want to have more people going out and play for to meet those type of people, to meet that type of community out there, instead of just focusing on the gameplay itself. Any thoughts on it, Chris, before I continue on? Um, when it comes to, you know, the change in time, the, the uh, yes, the average player isn't going to benefit from the whole six hours, you know, even if... Uh, like you know, obviously you they they're not the ones that are grinding, you mm-hmm. know? so they're not the ones benefiting from the right. whole experience. But that means they can you know do with the Pokemon Go thing of sitting back and you know playing at their own leisure. Right. Um. You know, I I understand the people that can only work before a certain time and can only work after a certain time. I get that. Um. But at the same time, I, I I don't see too much of a difference between it just being cut in half, you know? Yeah, no, there's definitely not much difference when it comes down to it. Now, let's talk of what the community has only, been... Only because we've already had it, too, I will say. Right, and that's understandable when it came to changing how Pokemon Go really works. And this is what I want to actually get a topic off real quick and how the controversy has been about. Now, because of the instance changes and this announcement of community day changing from six hours to three hours, the community is livid. And livid to the point where they're raging all over the place. They are saying that this is a disgrace for changing all of this. Why are they discouraging this kind of thing? People are just not understanding that this is what Pokemon Go should have been since the beginning. And at the same time, the core values of what Niantic is striving to do. Now, there is an article uh, in Pokemon Go Hub, and I'm actually going to go real quick to it. Let me see if I can find that real quick. Yeah, if they don't talk about it, um, I have something that I'll add on. Yeah, so there was an actual um, person that was able to uh, directly speak with the director of Pokemon Go Live game, Michael uh, Sternak. Now, they reach out, they talked, and even if they have clear disagreement on a lot of different things, they did mention and talk about what the community has been voicing about since the announcement. So, uh, background is perspective. Everybody has been playing Pokemon Go and Pokemon as general since the long age, uh, since this came out. So it's definitely something that both of them have been, you know, know pretty well since day one of, of the game's uh, release and everything. And bo- all both of them have seen the magic of how Pokemon Go can truly shine in an environment where the community gets together. You know, Pokemon, um, Pokemon Go Fest, Community Days, uh, special events that incentivize, you know, gameplay together, raid days, things like that. So they all seen the magics and, of course, the downfalls of Pokemon Go at some point. Now, when it comes down to it, there is one section that I really, really love about this, and it says, the broken vision, Not end quote. And as the report elsewhere, and by people more in known and more equivalent than me, Pokemon has taken a hard left when COVID hit, as we all did with everything else in our lives, really. A number of these changes admittedly drastically altered their vision for the game. Instead of the game that was different in encouraging people to venture outside and make new friends and grow and experiences together, it became, by necessity, like any other game, <clears throat> which is play from home. As specifically with instance in his words, players never had to leave their home to have the full Go experience, end quote. It's true. It's humongously true that because when, when COVID and the pandemic started, everybody had to adjust their lives to a more indoor or indoor kind of gameplay in, in the sense. We didn't know like how Pokemon Go was going to be affected. When we started this podcast, and we started this podcast at the beginning of 2020, mm-hmm. 
It was in, in February 2020. We were about to hit the pandemic. When we started this podcast, we didn't know how the changes were going to go. We didn't even know if Pokemon Go was going to survive because we knew from the beginning that Pokemon Go is an outside play, get together kind of deal. But nobody can couldn't do that during those times. I, I will say um, when it happened, um, we did say in the podcast, or at least I remember saying it, mm-hmm. that you know people were going to be confused and angry when they switched back the bonuses. Yes. Knowing they said it was going to be, you know, something that it was just going to be in there for a short time. Yes. It wasn't something that was going to be permanent. The worst part of it was that we didn't know how long it was going to take. Uh, back then, it was uncertain of how things were going to go, especially for the game itself and how yeah. it, the world was going to take about. Now, just like anybody, any other game or any, uh, any basically any company, they had to adjust their, their world to the pandemic and they had to actually make sure that people stay home and stay safe because they didn't want to be the catalyst of a worldwide, you know, mass, I guess the word is that. I don't want to actually say that, but, I'm, you know, mass, uh, really, Chris? <laughs> really? <laughs> You're not going to do that anyway, so no, I don't know about that. But anyways, um, it, it, it didn't want to be the catalyst when it comes to actually being like, like that. We know Pokemon Go is the center of group play. And that was the vision that we saw for a while. It's just, it, it was, it, we weren't supposed to really have all of these bonuses for as long as we did, but we had to adjust and Niantic had to adjust. Now, let me read a little bit more of this part of the article. Some of this was fine and we don't intend to roll back, uh, just like the GBL requirements, because at the time GBL was fresh and new in our minds and we had to work for it. Do you remember the 15 kilometers that we had to work for all three sets? Oh, when they when they added that, people were not very happy. But um, it made sense for what Pokemon Go tr- made to shine in the end of the day. People yeah. out there, even our even our own Lauren Sevier Ken from Lura Podcast, was doing fifteen kilometers a day just to play GBL. Yeah, I I do think it's something uh, they should do. You know, have you walk for your sets? But I feel like you know whatever it was five kilometers per set or two kilometers per set whatever it was right i feel like they should do more sets but um that's just my two cents again we could go on on how things could go but they're not going to roll back something like this because they know how competitive the game can be anyways continue on with the article such as a wider distribution uh distribution and saturation of spawns points so people have more spawns where they work and live and rest a free daily pass research tag so streaks can keep going and so on. So all of those things are going to stay because they want people to play the game and keep their streaks up in no matter what. But incest in particular became a major sticking point internally at Niantic as it, as it and as the, the live director said, put it for those internal discussions broke the vision of the game, the things that set it apart. We know that Pokemon Go is a Go out and play experience when they change instance to a 30 second why you keep doing me this <laughs> um the ability to actually just get the spawns from your home really ruined the experience for a lot of people such as COVID did but at the same time they had to adjust they want people to st- or at least Niantic wanted their players to keep on playing and they had to adjust for that point now Continue on a little bit more. In their vision, it was a counterintuitive and really counterproductive to be able to ter- uh, theoretically spawn everything you need without even to having to go anywhere and with such frequency and ease. There was and is a strong sense that something important has been lost. I truly believe that those are words of somebody that actually loves this game so much that Unfortunately, they had to take a hard left turn with their game. And it just breaks to say that even though it brought a lot of new players into the game, unfortunately, that was not what it was meant to do. It was just meant to have players still play their game and change according to what the world needed. 
I could go on more about the actual topics of what they talked about. And I encourage anybody to go out and read this article because it actually makes sense what it seems to be. Now, there is something to note when they actually did talk about this now. What's prominent looking into data in the first place was called from the community members through he openly recognized it was not the majority of his players in the community. So when they discussed this kind of changes, they didn't actually talk about uh, talk to just all the community leaders out there. They got the feedback mostly from community uh, uh, leaders, Discord servers, and some YouTubers. We know the YouTubers have a big play into what you know we as the community can hear but again they looked into many different aspects in that point such discussions were the trigger to look into the data and as noted several places by now the data says less than five percent of the players play for three hours again all of this all of these topics are just incredible and it makes sense voicing out and talking to somebody directly from Niantic about these types of changes the internet, unfortunately, doesn't take it that way. And most of the community has been getting basically taken out. There's pitchforks and torches for the reason that they're thinking that they're actually going against of what the community wants. And that's not true. That's definitely not true. I also want to point out, and again, I'm not pointing fingers. I'm not talking to about anybody, but there, are, there is still a sense that some players, especially some disabled and people that can't really play outside, unfortunately are going to lose the ability to play because of this type of changes. As I said, I'm not, talk I'm not speaking for them. I'm just telling what they have I have seen in other places, in other communities out there. The problem with that is that, again, we can't police everybody. Niantic has been full aware of talking about the with those players, I'm sure. It's just that just like a lot of people are saying, they are listening, but they're not responding. And that's what it's getting to a lot of oh, the people out there. Yeah. So the controversy also mentions, and unfortunately I hate to point out that when it comes to the disabled and people who can and you know people that can re cannot really play the game because of the type of changes, I hate to say that a lot of other people are taking advantage of that. They are trying to make sure that they're trying to support, but at the same time, they're trying to do it for their own benefit. They're supporting that type of player, but they're not, they're doing it for their own gain. That's at least how I see it. And that's not right. If you're really going to support the player out there, you can't have a hidden agenda and, and next to it. Just because you can't play from the three hours, you can't adjust your schedule for it. Or you can't, you know, find a way to, you know, basically play the game in your own accord. Unfortunately, again, you can't please everybody. And I can't, we can't really do anything about it. I was enraged how I was looking at how the community was acting because they're not taking the bigger picture into the consideration. They're just looking into their own agenda at this point. And that's what gets me the most in the end of the day. Any more thoughts on that, Chris? You know, the the main thing I, I don't really get is, you know, everybody was playing the game, you know, when it came out, when, you know, before we got all the bonuses. But as soon as it gets taken away, a lot of people are complaining. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm a bit confused on some you know points of views um how you know like it, the game was getting played before so i'm i'm a bit confused but i'm i'm not very knowledgeable uh from certain people's points of views right right so and that's 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 understandable i don't want to speak for anybody i don't know what right they're doing. we don't want to speak um, for anybody out there we don't want to actually say that yeah you know because we know so, this person that we know that you know this is going to be bad for them at the end of the day but we don't know yeah. them we don't know how they're feeling we don't know how they're really because if you're complaining that that means you're passionate about about this game and yeah, i will agree with that if you're passionate that means that you have the right to complain because you can't play the game that you love the most again cannot please everybody 
And I just hate to see how the community has been divided through this specifically moment of community changes. Now, I could rant on, and I feel like I have rant on for all the last half an hour, and sorry to for our PR listeners out there. I want to I wanna do better. And I'm thinking for future events, at least from now on, and see how they go. I'm going to try to get with our community leaders in our community, Chris. You know, uh, we have like many different services out there that we are uh, around this area, but I actually want to get to uh, to get to know them once again. And I want to start moving the go out experience once again. Now, Community Day is close to a month away, or less than a month away at this point. Let's see how we can actually do better by actually incentivizing people to go out and play. We have the bonuses. We know what we're doing. We just need to bring the community back from the clutches of the last two years, for sure. It's It may not be the same, but at least it's a start. Yeah, I, I do think uh, Cottony was definitely a good start to that, incentivizing people to go back out to parks again, other than, uh, you know, uh, the spawns that, uh, the nests, yeah. other than the nests. Yeah, and that's that's what I really do think that Niantic is stepping in the right direction. Unfortunately, the, the, the people out there, especially the internet, unfortunately, I'm not seeing the bigger picture at that point. So let's do better. Let's try to change our ways of doing things. I know we're so used to just sitting at home, raiding if we need to, but I'm thinking of like starting to move forward with the go-out experience because you know what? I miss meeting players. I miss seeing them around. I miss the the moments we had, the condos we get, the shout outs we had, you know, things like that. I want to experience it. And I don't want to just lock them up through the events that we're going to have in the future, like GoFest or other safari zones that we may, we may have in the future. Because that may not be the only thing that shows that the community is out there and playing. We have to make sure that our community grows in a in the sense that we know the vision that Niantic wants us to grow. So uh, that's my take. And then to a lot of the uh, controversy out there, uh, I could have gone and raged a lot more. Trust me, I was furious uh, at one point. If you want to see that, I do have another bots out there <laughs> uh, one of my live streams. But uh, after taking in everything and all the players and how people have been talking about this, uh, this is my take of what we can do to change the mindset of a lot of people out there. And that's why we're here. That's what our podcast is about, hopefully. All right, Chris, I think we're ranting on too much. Uh, we have a lot of things, and we're, only at, and we're already an hour in into the podcast. Woo, hey. uh, all right, we got to get some water. We got to get going. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so... When it comes down to it, uh, let's talk about uh, APK mining. Now, APK mine is breaking terms of service, but it is not when you are just talking about it. So, our wonderful Poké miners from Twitter, shout out to them, have actually found some interesting things into the APK mine. And this is going to be adding a lot of new things. We're just going to go over the highlights real quick. Uh, first and foremost, we have Miss Bolt. Uh, it's a move that's been added into the code. This is actually Latias' special move. Latias or Latias, I think, for sure. But it's a special move specifically for those Pokemon. Hint, hint. Uh, new forms for all Scatterbox have been added uh, and all Spewas have been added. Pikachu Fly in Okinawa, Rockruff Dusk, which is the missing uh, evolution that were, uh, of the Rockruff, all Minion Meteor forms, which is another Pokemon that we'll hopefully see soon. Uh, the Home Screen Widget, which is now will be available on Android, which we talked about. Uh, several new additions to the Mega Level point system that we've been dynamiting recently. Now, this is the interesting part. A new Mega Evolve bottom and widget was added, which looks and takes you to the new Mega Screen. A previously reported, there is a new, or as previously reported, sorry, a new Mega Evolution screen coming, which looks to be replacing the current Mega Evolution screen as the current dot that is used to mark the Mega is set to Legacy now. So it means it's hidden. Uh, this screen has a special banner, background, slider for the level, and few other things to make it stand out. This screen will allow you to view 
your new unlock perks and a description of these perks in a new tab view. This screen also shows you something that calls a free Mega Evolution icon, which we believe is tied to the new cooldown system. Mega levels and perks. We have the Mega, uh, or I'm sorry, Megas are receiving a new level system. These levels need to be unlocked. You will be notified when you unlock one, and each level gives you different perks like the buddy system. Perks include reduced energy, cash experience, ally attack, assuming the current attack bonus, cooldown, extra large candy, and catch candy. These levels are number in code, and, but appear at a text name and is presented to the user. So we think there's like a body level 4 or something like best body when it came down to it. Hmm. These mega levels and their perks will be pushed to the game master, so we should be able to report on them once that, game, that happens. And still a lot of it is obstructed. But, you know, it is like detective work at that point. Uh, Mega Cooldown. A new cooldown widget was added. Uh, it has a new animation, Progress Widget. This cooldown is, is a time duration, but instead of hours, it's in days. When the Mega is ready after the uh, cooldown period, the icon will glow. This timer will have a cooldown wait effect by the looks of it, and you can see how much time the cooldown has left on it. Uh, they don't have any hard evidence to support this just yet, but as cooldown is unlockable perk, there is a free Mega Evolution button. We think it's safe to assume that once the level perks have been unlocked, a free Mega Evolve option can happen. If this is the case, this is exactly what the community has been asking for Megas, which is awesome. And then we have the Mega Portraits, which we actually did find in the code last time. The uh, basically... It says that the serialized system that grays them out, assuming you don't have them evolved before, like in the Pokédex. This new portrait section appears to be part of the Pokémon-type background system, like the Luckies or Shadows, etc. Now, before we go on a little bit more into that, that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot of yeah. things that they're changing for the Mega System. I believe this is what we are finally looking into, actually uh, seeing how potent the Megas can be. They made Megas great again. We still, we're still yet to see how there really is changing how we see the meta of the Megas. Yeah. We still don't know how are we going to initially get the energy for it, aside from just raids or research at that point. But there's a lot to take in, and the levels and perks tells me that just as the body system, it shows that you want to have your Mega more prevalent, <coughs> excuse me, to uh, evolve it or use it in the specific situations when it came down to it. So, I don't know. This may seem something to look forward to. It's still an AP APK, so that means that they're not taken in out yet. But the month of April is still fresh. It hasn't even started. We don't know what might happen. There's a lot to take in. <coughs> Um, there's more to talk about, like the route maker and the PvP fraction things. Uh, there is one thing that I know that a lot of people are going to be accepted about, and this is actually something that I would be accepted about, but I guess we will go for it. A subscription services we found a while ago received an update to get set the store price and get current country code. Uh, I don't know about the subscription, but that means that, you know, pay to play is something to happen now. <laughs> um... We don't know what this means. We don't know if this is just the beginning of it. Uh, and we don't even know how the bonuses are really going to be if there's a subscription services to Pokemon Go. So I will think that it's an okay thing, but we'll, we'll talk about it once it gets to it. There's a lot of other changes out there, but there are just notable things that they found in the Go since then. So Chris, any thoughts, things that you are welcome to add to this conversation? Um, I do think this is something that we definitely need for Megas because they kind of felt like they were behind a paywall. Very much. Um, I mean, yes, we they've started rolling out uh, getting the candy from uh, Quest, which is awesome. Uh, right. You can get free ones just for spinning a gym now, which is insane. Love that. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, if you Mega evolve a Pokemon and now it's possible, like if 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 it works the way they're thinking it works, where we're going to, you know, get a, a quote unquote free mega evolve every few days. I, I think that's going to be amazing. Yeah. Um, I, I think a lot more people are going to want to mega evolve. 
because you know in the mega in, in the main series games uh in the iterations that they had mega uh pokemon you just be able to mega no matter what um you know no if ands or buts you just need the stone um so i know a lot of people are pretty disappointed with it in pokemon go oh yeah no definitely something that uh wasn't really taken well when it first came out um it's still there so it's not like they're taking away the other chances of getting the energy for it yeah. but if there's something else that you can do with the mega that would be great and i liked it this is maybe the change that we needed for the longest time uh but i hope that this does change how we view megas and pokemon go from here now hey maybe they'll add it into the pvp scene for that reason but we'll see when that comes <laughs> uh we'll see it when it comes around but yeah uh that's all the news actually that's all that we have to talk about and i'm glad that we got to sit down and actually discuss things more prevalent to a lot of different things i hope that people can take our podcast and hopefully show that we're not against the changes we're not against the community either but we're hopeful that things will do better if this change is good all right pvp section get good get right here we go cruz <laughs> all, right, all right all right uh gbl is back in uh gray league which i think is gonna go in ultra league starting tomorrow uh, and oh. the little jungle cup, right? I think that's the meta right now. Um, yes. Little jungle cup. Yep. So, any battles there, Triso? Fair. Yeah, I've been doing. Uh, I haven't been touching the little cups. <laughs> uh, like especially when Great Leagues uh on the table. Um. So yeah, I've just been having fun with Great League. I was running a team that was super super weak to Talonflame. But it still had some play. Uh, but I switched up my team and I've been having a, a little bit more success. Um, where I've been, I actually started leading Drifflin uh, with uh, Stunfisk and Metacham in the back, um, which is a very strange team. Um, but I, I don't know, I kept seeing leads that Drifflin would have been good against because I kept leading with the scary tree, Trevenant. Hey. And it was just rough. It was really rough running him. Um, so, yeah, I've been having some fun with that. Well, with Walden, I'm just dominating some of the better right now. It's kind of hard to get a cross type into the into the first lot, right? Yeah, yeah. Wellring's very, very strong right now. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, GBL being great, just having an off season so far. So we'll, we'll only touch bases when we know there's something cool happening about it. As for the other thing, and I'm sure that Chris doesn't have any factions updates because they're on a break right now. Yeah, we're, uh, we're just waiting to see if we can do some practice, honestly. Yeah. The Labor Pool Championships that happen in Europe, the Pokemon proper championships happen for the very first time for Pokemon Go this weekend. And it seemed exciting. Uh, I think around 65 to 70 players attended the event. And... Of course, there's still some changes that seem that they could do as for the, the cons of it, like the internet and all those things. But uh, overall, like from pictures that I've seen from Psionic and other, other players who actually went to the event to report how they went, it seemed pretty cool. Uh, you know, a little more organization seemed to have happened, but again, um, or needs to be happening, I'm sorry. But again, it seemed like a great event for people to just get together play the event, stay safe, of course, and then, you know, play through the other event. So we do have, I believe, the uh, rankings for it. Let me see if I can find a Liverpool Pokemon. So it says right there, the, there's also side events and things like that that they had for, like, other things that they give you can want them. Uh, Pokemon community vibes all along. So Psyonic has been like reporting on all this all around, and it actually seemed pretty prominent to about it. There are also other events uh, around it, so it seems pretty cool. Pretty cool. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I'm trying to find where the rankings were for it, and if there was the final. Ah, oh, there it is. Pokemon Go. So 62 players. Overall, 
and they went, I believe they went seven rounds or something like that. Uh, why is this in a different language? I'm not sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's see. There was one winner. I just don't remember who it was. <laughs> oh, come on, who is there? Why is this not translated? So finals was against Aiming Joke and JBKO, 1987. And surprisingly enough, it was pretty cool. <laughs> I, I I don't have much, unfortunately, to report aside from that because it's really interesting to see Pokemon Go be seen as more of a competitive scene. Um, I know a lot of people in the mainstream games still don't really respect it too much, mm -hmm. but you know, I, I'm def I'm definitely uh, liking seeing it in the spotlight. All right, all right. Um, yes, yes. Uh, I do think that there's another regional happening. Yeah, yeah, there's a few happening. Yeah, there's a few happening around. Um, for some reason, I'm getting a butterfree raid here. But anyways, <laughs> uh, I think next weekend or the following weekend after that, we're having one here in the States. Uh, it's not in Orlando, unfortunately, which, you know, it was happening before, but not anymore. Um, but yeah, seems pretty cool. Congratulations to all the players for going out, playing the game. Uh, again, changes can be made if you send enough feedback and see how it goes from here and out. So, on to Worlds, I guess, because there will be a World addition to this eventually. Uh, with that being said, Chris, I think that's all we cover. We went a bit long today, but I guess there was a lot to rant about. Let me mm -hmm. see if I can get a shiny before the end of the stream. Nope, I cannot. Uh -oh. No, nope, I couldn't. All right, Chris, anything else to cover? Anything else to say? Um, you know, just uh, respect other people's opinions on, you know, what they like. Uh, we can definitely talk, you know, if uh, if you have a different opinion. I definitely want to hear how people feel about the changes. Um, I mean, I don't want to sway other people's opinions. I am very curious uh, however the other people are feeling. Yes, um, if there's so people, yeah. if there's people out there that want to uh, give us, you know, some thought about their own experiences when it comes to these changes, let us know. I mean, we are out there. Uh, we're on Twitter. We're on uh, Discord. We have our own respective channels here. Uh, so if you guys want to talk about things, uh, let us know for sure. Uh, but anyways, thank you so much for listening, everybody. Uh, we really grew appreciate it if you guys are always listening to the podcast, always in the podcast services fees. Check us out, Papo Podcast, Google Podcasts, Arha Radio, Spotify, any of those places. We would greatly appreciate it. Uh, myself, in the social media space, I have a Twitter, Pure Let It Go. And then Chris, we have Pokemon Trigger Please, PKMN Trigger Please, as mentioned there. We do have the Purify Podcast at gmail.com if you want to email us anything, info, or anything you want to talk about. Uh, we'll definitely go in to talk about, you know, this kind of changes in our Discord or an email if you want to. So keep us in mind there. And I didn't type that correctly somehow. Um, and of course, don't forget to check us out at the purefoypodcast.com, the professor network. So again, guys, let's be good. Let's be civil about a lot of different things. And let's voice our opinions in a timely manner because... There's a lot out there, and there's definitely, definitely all types of players out there. We just need to know how we can do better for everybody at that point. All right, Chris, how about you take us away for the night? All right, all right, all right. Uh, I think it's a very exciting time in Pokemon Go. Uh, definitely not a uh, lazy week. Definitely a lot to do. Um, I really hope you know, everyone enjoys their time, gets the shinies they want, gets the XP they want, the Pokemon they want, and we'll catch you next week when we find out, you know, a little bit more of the mysteries that lurk ahead. Peace out, guys. Keep purifying them. We'll see you guys next week. <laughs>